Welcome to Scripture and Prayer Time. I'm Pastor Ed Blonsky from St. Matthew Lutheran Church and Early Childhood Center in Hawthorne Woods, Illinois. And today I'll be reading from 2 Samuel 21, and I'll be praying Psalm 132. So let's get right to it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now there was a famine in the days of David for three years, year after year, and David sought the face of the Lord. And the Lord said, there is blood guilt on Saul and on his house, because he put the Gibeonites to death. So the king called the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not of the people of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. Although the people of Israel had sworn to spare them, Saul had sought to strike them down in his zeal for the people of Israel and Judah. And David said to the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And how shall I make atonement that you may bless the heritage of the Lord? The Gibeonites said to him, It is not a matter of silver or gold between us and Saul or his house, neither is it for us to put any man to death in Israel. And he said, What do you say that I shall do for you? They said to the king, The man who consumed us and planned to destroy us so that we should have no place in all the territory of Israel let seven of his sons be given to us, so that we may hang them before the Lord at Gibeah of Saul, the chosen of the Lord. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Saul's son Jonathan, because of the oath of the Lord that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. The king took the two sons of Ritzbah, the daughter of Aiah, whom she bore of Saul, Armoni and Mephibosheth, and the five sons of Merab, the daughter of Saul, whom she bore to Adriel, the son of Barzillai, the Maholathite, and he gave them into the hands of the Gibeonites. And they hanged them on the mountain before the Lord, and the seven of them perished together. They were put to death in the first days of harvest, at the beginning of barley harvest. Then Ritzpah, the daughter of Aiah, took sackcloth and spread it for herself on the rock, from the beginning of the harvest until rain fell upon them from the heavens. And she did not allow the birds of the air to come upon them by day or the beasts of the field by night. When David was told that Ritzpah, the daughter of Aiah, the concubine of Saul, had done, David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of his son Jonathan from the men of Jabeth Gilead, who had stolen them from the public square of Beth Shan, where the Philistines had hanged them on the day the Philistines killed Saul on Gilboa. And he brought from there the bones of Saul and the bones of his son Jonathan, and they gathered the bones of those who were hanged. And they buried the bones of Saul and his son Jonathan in the land of Benjamin and Zelah, in the tomb of Kish his father. And they did all that the king commanded, and after that God responded to the plea of the land. There was war again between the Philistines and Israel, and David went down together with his servants, and they fought against the Philistines, and David grew weary. And Ishbi Benob, one of the descendants of the giants whose spear weighed 300 shekels of bronze and who was armed with a new sword, thought to kill David. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, came to his aid and attacked the Philistine and killed him. Then David's men swore to him, You shall no longer go out with us to battle, lest you quench the lamp of Israel. After this, there was again war with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sebekai the Hushathite struck down Saph, who was one of the descendants of the giants. And there was again war with the Philistines at Gob. And Elhanan, the son of Jer Oregim, the Bethlehemite, struck down Goliath the Gittite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was again war at Gath, where there was a man of great stature who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot. 24 in number, and he also was descended from the giants. And when he taunted Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimei, David's brother, struck him down. These four were descended from the giants in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Now, that's an interesting passage. This is a, a sort of a summary of, of throughout the years of David's reign as king, and we have 
um, the, we have some uh, relatives, it, it would appear, of Goliath, the giant that David killed when he was a young man, uh, here. Uh, but then we have the seven sons of Saul who are executed for the crime of their father, Saul. And uh, here is what the Lutheran Study Bible says about that. Maybe it will help us understand that. Saul's sons, whether innocent or guilty with their father, now pay the penalty for Saul's crime. God will not allow sin to go unpunished, though his justice sometimes does not make sense to us. The apparent innocence of the seven from Saul's house, who were hanged on a mount before the Lord as an act of atonement for Saul's sin, brings into sharp focus the all-atoning sacrifice of Christ, the Son of God, who was crucified on Mount Calvary for all the sins of the world. Not just any man's death would propitiate God. Only the death of God's Son could bring salvation. So these stories, while true, and we may not understand or even agree with the justice of them, all of this is just more evidence that the Old Testament is pointing us ahead to the new, that is, to Christ. And here we have almost a, a very clear picture of an atoning death for the sins of someone else. So um, the, the number seven may be significant here to a completeness. Um, idea going on here too. I don't pretend to not understand this and sometimes these passages just cannot be understood in uh, terms that we would say would be justice today uh, in the 21st century. So I don't have a better answer for you than that. So we'll just go with God is good and he loves us and but he does take sin seriously. So let's turn to our prayers and this is Psalm 132. Let us pray. Remember, O Lord, in David's favor all the hardships he endured, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the Mighty One of Jacob, I will not enter my house or go into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the Mighty One of Jacob. Behold, we heard of it in Ephrathah. We found it in the fields of Jaar. Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, and go to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your saints shout for joy. For the sake of your servant David, do not turn away the face of your anointed one. The Lord swore to David a sure oath from which he will not turn back. One of the sons of your body I will set on your throne. If your sons keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their sons also forever shall sit on your throne. For the Lord has chosen Zion, he has desired it for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provisions. I will satisfy her poor with bread. Her priests I will clothe with salvation, and her saints with shout for joy. There I will make a horn to sprout for David. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. His enemies I will clothe with shame. But on him, his crown will shine. Father, we thank you for Jesus, who was that son from David's own body that sits on David's throne forever. That is the throne you established in Israel, your people. Not a physical location, not a physical geography in the Middle East of this world, but the church, your people, Jesus saved, and heaven where we will live forever because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. All these stories that we have been hearing point ahead to Jesus. Help us to trust that you are a loving God, that you do take sin seriously, so seriously that you sent Jesus, your own Son, to atone for all our sins. And we're thankful, Lord. We ask you to be with those that we have named either in the comment section or in our hearts that need your healing touch. We also ask that you would bring an end to the coronavirus pandemic. And we pray for our nation, Lord, that you would restore us to be a united people once again. For those who are in elected office or appointed office uh, are, and have authority over us, we ask you to bless them and protect them. And also that they would govern wisely and with integrity that comes from you. Thwart those who would try to bring us to a place where we don't need you anymore, or wouldn't want you anymore. 
we ask that you would bind our enemies so that we may worship you and follow in your ways all the days of our life. For the sake of Jesus, we pray this and the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. And now go in the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Join me again tomorrow morning for more scripture and prayer time. God's richest blessings to you.